Salut, semne cu sute, hello. Hello. To our new friends. We are here with good news and uh, interesting stories about uh, this new project that we are part of as a pilot, Tracks for Crafts. Um, I got the invite two years ago and uh, the project started one year ago. So it's a milestone. Yes. And um, of course, when I heard the news, I was thinking, yes, we are honored, uh, it's so wonderful. But I couldn't share this um, with the community. It was a critical moment for us. The war in Ukraine has just started and we're all uh, sad, stressed, crying and scared. And um, I had to be on my own and I had my mind rolling on um, what is our subject? How can we contribute to European crafts uh, to bring value to it uh, with our tradition? And um, I knew I had to fulfill some criteria to be something old with a European roots and history, but also relevant and fashionable and with a future. It had to be something um, uh, to cross our borders, mm -hmm. to unite people all over Europe because it's an European project. And it also had to be something uh, beautiful, valuable, uh, luxurious even, in the same time um, affordable and uh, democratic. Um, the budget should not be an impediment for anyone who wants to, to join. In the same time, I was thinking it must be something simple to start with. Uh, attractive for any beginner, mm -hmm. but um, to leave enough space for development, for complexity and for progress. Um, and uh, of course it had to be something uh, uh, to be in tune with our activity, yes. as we are uh, part of UNESCO Intangible Heritage and um, we have a mission already. So from many ideas that came to my mind, it had to remain just one place. Um, I was also uh, keeping um, some concerns and worries in my mind because um, I know very well, and it's a true fact, that Romania and Romanians uh, are facing uh, misconception and prejudice and um, we um, are not used with, um, it's our first European yes. project, and uh, we are not used with uh, documents, with preparing them, with a bureaucracy, and um, that is because, not because we are not organized, mm -hmm. but because uh, we function as an organic community, and uh, we don't have written down rules. But uh, most of all, I was worried uh, because um, of this war at the border and realizing that many people across Europe don't even know where we are. So within one hour watching the news, we moved from Bulgaria and Serbia, south of Balkans, to form two countries <laughs> yes. and eventually disappear out from the map. So, yes, it's sad, but our um, community is about education. We have a lot of work to do and we are not afraid of um, sharing what we know mm -hmm. in a friendly manner. So let's start with the map, where we are. We like to imagine that we are here since the beginning of time, of course, and we have legends about it. But um, we have a lot of proof uh, from 7,000 years ago in terms of not just um, inhabited territory, mm -hmm. but in terms of flourishing art and agriculture in several cultures, peaceful cultures. And um, later on in um, ancient times, we have written proofs from the Greeks who had uh, their uh, trade and their uh, colonies, their ports on the Black Sea coast. And uh, 
they also mentioned the quality of our uh, fine hemp fabrics, mm -hmm. which is important for us because we love it even today. Um, and then it was the moment of big empires, greedy empires. And we had gold. <laughs> yes. We still have. And um, so part of our territory was, for a while, part of the Roman Empire. Although the rest of our uh, lands remained free, and the people remained free, uh, our culture was uh, heavily yes. influenced by the Roman culture and language, which we actually admired. And um, we remained uh, influenced by the East Roman Empire for a glorious and golden 1,000 years until um, the Ottomans came. And um, we were never part of the empire, but we had tight connections. And they were not always worse. We paid a tribute, like um, tax for peace, and we were looking to them for protection against the Catholics who were trying to um, assimilate us from the west and from the north. So we were rather friends with the Ottomans, I think. <laughs> and friendship uh, with benefits. <laughs> friendship with benefits. But in the same time, um, the Greek uh, ports became now Italian ports because uh, Genovese merchants um, kept uh, trade functioning, uh, spreading all sorts of goods coming along the Silk Road. And we had uh, seven, six or seven colonies and banks established by the, by the Genovese merchants. Giorgio, Galati, and so many others. Linked with uh, big rivers. Yes, of course. That flow into the and they are going to be important sea. in our story. That's why we, we include them. Uh, the Russian Empire started to expand slowly, slowly, and for a few hundreds of years, two or three, um, we had concerns and uh, we had territorial losses to them. Um, so, again, part of our territory was in part uh, in the Russian Empire. Um, but um, from the, in the same time, from the West, Another empire started to, <laughs> started to expand, expand, and uh, it was the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And of course, at some point, we were the battleground for these three. Yes. The Ottomans, the Austrians, and the Russians were fighting for influence exactly on top of Romania. And somehow, I think none of our provinces was in all the empires. So this is why we started to get so many influences and this is why our DNA is so mixed and this is why our heritage is so rich. Yes. Um, starting with 1821, although we don't have a painting for that, uh, we started to have a national conscience and uprising and uh, first of all, we partnered with the Greeks with the Eteria Revolution. But then we were uh, also very much influenced by the French and by the Italians. And um, we started to plan our own uh, revolution for Liberté, Galité, Fraternité. And uh, in the paintings of the time, Romania was always represented with a lady wearing a traditional Romanian blouse. And this is uh, even today representative and um, we have big uh, artist, Matisse, represented us also through a lady wearing a blouse. The Romanian blouse. The Romanian blouse. Um, it's important to mention this is not a peasant blouse, but is a Romanian blouse and it was worn by our first ladies and by our queens. As you can see, they simply um, adapted to the Western clothes to show off emancipation and um, to encourage ladies to, to become financially independent, doing their crafts, what they knew best, weaving and embroidery, and uh, to transmit it to, further gener to the next generation, as you can see in the image on the right, the Queen Mary mm -hmm. and her daughter. 
this is important to, to mention, it's not our daily wear, the festive blouse you see. They are worn in important uh, moments, in festive days, in celebration, but also if you receive a medal, for instance, like this lady, Smaranda Brescu, being awarded with yes. a, in yes. a military ceremony, because uh, she was one, um, uh, actually she graduated the University of Fine Arts, but her hobby was uh, flying and flying. parachuting, mm -hmm. and she was a uh, uh, world champion for a few times, and she was uh, decorated by the king, wearing the blouse. And um, just to prove the importance of the textile arts, our uh, currency, our money, showed off women. The importance uh, of. <laughs> yes, importance of making your own clothes and destiny in the same time. And uh, sign of independence considered back then. And um, the, the money was, uh, sh the money were depicting women embroidering or uh, spinning or, and our queen was also spinning, just promoting the, the traditional crafts and um, promoting our uh, economic independence and growth at the time. And we, later on, we found similar, a similar message coming from Mahatma Gandhi. And the spinning wheel is now on the flag of India. Mm -hmm. It's important to at least to know how to make your own clothes. Um, after the Second World War, we had uh, really um, tragic times and um, the symbol of uh, our resistance against the, the communists, yeah. the communists uh, were ladies and of course they were wearing the blouse and the blouse on top is uh, now in a museum prison, ex-prison. Yes. So yes, the ladies were also wearing the blouse, not only the queen and um, somehow um, the tradition endured, although our villages were totally destroyed by the communist regime. And um, we are happy to see that today, um, ladies from, uh, young girls from the same region are still wearing the blouses of grandma their grandmothers while learning how to make their own. Um, because it's important to remember that even if they changed in time according with uh, fashion and society, we really like <laughs> the Romanian blouse. Uh, not necessarily because it's um, Romanian, but we think it's beautiful the way we created it for ourselves. And we feel so and each happy generation and beautiful when wearing them. Yes, and each generation will find the, the freedom to, to bring it uh, in the present and make it relevant. And uh, this is what we are doing today. Um, so after this brief uh, incursion in our history, we shall present our culture as a piece of cake, right? Yes. A piece of cake uh, baked on a... The best dessert. Latin uh, flour, let's say. And... Um, um, connected with this uh, creme de la creme, stuff that we liked and we selected and we considered best of all the other cultures we came in contact with through good neighborhood or mm -hmm. through uh, occupation. So it's going to be sweet. And um, something else that is important and it was a concern and it's still uh, is a very important concern for me is that our mind is not set to function in a seeing a project as a journey from A to B and to be able to make a graphic or a operational plan within this uh, Western European standard. Um, I think um, first of all we are very used with the unpredictable to happen. We can plan as much as we want we but then a war might erupt or something might, and we have to be prepared with alternatives. If this, then this, if this, then this. So um, it's also that a project is more like a journey somehow, and it's not always a bullet train journey. We take it slow, and we are talking about crafts. <laughs> so we have to 
uh, pay attention to the scenery as well and to the uh, the to friends enjoy. and people who are joining us on this uh, on this road and um, for us when we think of a project we think it like a, a new life and how is life uh, created we look into nature we are still connected with nature we are basically agriculture people by by our I think it's a, in our DNA, yes, it is. it's in our mind. A new project is a new seed that mm -hmm. you plant into a fertile ground. And now it's important to mention that we have, for the first time, we have European funds to keep our project going. And for us, the idea of European funds is like water coming yes. to help us grow. So this new project came like a new seed planted in the ground of our mind. The next stage, the next natural stage, is to start research and documenting. And this, is, this means digging into archives, into the past, into history. Find something stable to build on. It's like a foundation, but made by a tree, right? So the stage number two in a project is take care of the roots, spread the roots, get stability, make sure that everything you are going to, to do next has a solid uh, foundation. foundation and then you can grow uh, on top of the ground you can grow into a beautiful tree you can bloom at some point and you'll start attracting a team a busy bee curious bees who want to join to be part of the project and create honey for themselves so create benefits for themselves but also benefits for the tree transforming the flowers into fruit and in this moment uh, we see that our project already starts to have results and when we have results they are tempting and people like birds are coming to to see and What's to happening? see if it, what is something good here and they will eat and further they will go and spread the news so this is how we see dissemination and communication it's like birds singing about what they saw in our project in the same time bees are still working so this phase didn't stop in the same time we are still blooming and in the same time also a new project might start if a fruit will fall from the tree from there a new seed you might be leave it to, uh, to waste <laughs> some other people might get inspired from the project and the last phase is to enjoy the results of the hard work it means preserving the results and it's like in a jar we put them well preserved we eat from them and uh, we also write down the recipe for others to be able to replicate the project in case uh, they want to and this is why we are going to make all these discussions in English because it's an European project and we are funded by European money therefore we want it uh, to be beneficial for uh, for all the countries who contributed and uh, the results will be written down not in a cooking book <laughs> but in a video uh, diary let's say called the Needlework Chronicles yes. because we are going to talk a lot a lot about this Needlework Chronicles and um, it's important to remember that you can follow you can subscribe and follow and see our classes and learn so many exciting things uh, not only lessons about history but things that are um, very important for us today things that you might use sometime in the future but you can also uh, have a look at our uh, main activity, our mm -hmm. basic activity, because um, we are going to talk also about uh, um, how to create zero waste cutting patterns uh, and uh, how to uh, how to learn embroidery to uh, enrich them how to connect them with keys, all the pieces of the blouses. So this is our main activity, actually. And this is where the Trucks for Crafts comes to enrich and complete our activity. 
with this chapter that we called Dress Up and Ancient Lace. Dantalerica reflects differenza. Uh, details that make a difference. And you might be also interested to see how we explore all the different cultures we mentioned in the first. And um, we can discuss together about extravagance uh, and luxury clothes, but also about uh, pragmatic solutions that we learn, sustainable solutions, sustainable fashion that we've learned from our tradition. And um, also we will talk a lot about emotions because the assumed signs um, are a embroidered uh, diary of uh, women who didn't know how to read and write in a classical way in, uh, in the old times. And uh, together we will uh, learn how to celebrate imperfections and uh, to transform each mistake into a lesson, how to adapt, evolve, in order to keep crafts, traditions uh, alive and valued in Europe. So I hope you subscribe. I hope you follow us for more. And I hope you, we hear from, uh, from you very soon.